<laughs> Hello. Hello. Well, my name is Tommy Flanagan, and I'm a member of Pathological Liars Anonymous. <laughs> Did I say member? I mean, I'm, I'm the president of the organization. Yeah, that's it. Now, I didn't always lie. No, when I was a kid, I told the truth. But then one day, I got caught stealing money out of my mother's purse. I lied. I told her it was homework, that my teacher told me to do it. And she got fired. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> After that, lying was easy for me. I lied about my age and joined the Army. I was 13 at the time. Yeah, I was sent on a covert missions and was injured catching a mortar shell in my teeth. And they made me a three-star general. And then I got a job in journalism, writing for the National Enquirer, I mean, Geographic. Yeah. I was making 20000 a year a month. In fact, I won the Pulitzer Prize that year. Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. And then my cousin died, Pope John Paul II. And I took it really hard, maybe too hard. I tried to kill myself. I I did kill myself. Sure. Yeah, I was medically dead for a week and a half. It was a woman that brought me out of it. Debbie Williams. Yeah, right. And she told me about Pathological Liars Anonymous. Oh, you'd be surprised how many famous people belong there. In fact, at one of the meetings, I met my wife, Angelina Jolie. Yes, that's it. I'm a changed man now, and all because of Pathological Liars Anonymous. Why, I was even asked to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that's right. You betcha. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night. Yeah. Saturday Night Live! Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Saturday Night Live. I'm your host, Elton John. <laughs> Unless you're completely... Excuse me, I almost spit on you. Now. <laughs> it rolls off the tongue quite well, right? <laughs> Unless you're completely oblivious to your surroundings, you'll realize that this is not the New York studio and that we are taping live here at Cornerstone Church in Katy, Texas. <laughs> oh, I've lost my place. <laughs> In honor of this great state, I've decided to wear an Astros hat tonight and I've got my cowboy boots on. <laughs> Oh, I gotta tell you though, I, I haven't been this excited since I um, collaborated with Eminem at the Grammys. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll stop right there. Well, I'm, just, I'm just so excited that, that I got to work with him, and now I get to work, I get to be involved with you at this church. Uh, it's, 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 it's just a warm feeling to be welcomed so gladly into this church. It's, as um, one of your pastors, actually the stupid director of Family Life Ministry, said that you should share meals with monsters. Well, you've been sharing a meal with the monsters tonight, right? <laughs> well, I, um, I just, um, I'm delighted to be here, and I very much appreciate your graceful and warm welcome. It makes me really think twice about your Jesus. It really does. <laughs> Um, but, that's, but the point of being here tonight is not about me, right? It's uh, not about my salvation or something like that. It's really, we're really here to celebrate this lovely, this delightful, this charming, <laughs> this witty, this gorgeous, this beautiful administrator of administrator. Oh. What's that? No, hey, Carter, I, I promise, Carter, I'm not going to try to steal it away from Brian tonight. <laughs> What are you playing at, Carl? I told you like five times I wasn't going to do it. But now that you mentioned it, maybe I could woo her with a song. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. No, 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 no. No, not today. Oh, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> well, we got a lot of great acts tonight. Uh, all the classics are here. It is all for you, Deborah. All for you. Welcome again 
to Pumping It Up with Hans and Franz. Woo! like yogurt, all natural, no chemicals. <laughs> There's no fruit in the bottom of us. Not just on the bottom, but throughout. As though we were pre-stirred muscle yogurt. <laughs> oh, that's right, and here's something you won't see in the dedicates at your local supermarket. <laughs> Planning to teach a new class called SWS or 
steroids, weightlifting, and submission. <laughs> The women in Covington are really looking forward to that one. I think you can hear it. They were so impressed last time they heard it. Maybe this time they get the flabby little brains around it. Maybe give our shoes back. <laughs> Enough talk. We're not here to talk. We're here to pump <laughs> you all.
From Saturday Night Live News Headquarters, this is Weekend Update with Chevy Chase. So Carter got stoned at church? <laughs> oh, oh, kidney stone, okay. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Chevy Chase and you're not. This is in from Spring, Texas. New Spring resident Debbie Williams is consistency stressed. Why? Because being consistent is stressful. <laughs> Debbie is a new home. Debbie Spring is a new home of Debbie and Brian Williams, recently relocated from Katy, Texas, where Debbie is a locally celebrated author. Bringing her off the authoritative, authoritative skills to spring has been stressful for Debbie because she has had to walk the talk. Or in her case, she's had to stop fighting the writing. One of her writings, a book on submission, specifically her belief that the biblical concept of marriage includes wives respecting and submitting to their husband. Brian wanted to move to spring near her, his work and Debbie wanted to stay in Katy to be near their church where Debbie had served as a church administrator for 10 years. Submitting on paper and submitting in the flesh are two different levels. <laughs> one theoretical and one practical. <laughs> Consistency. A value highly, uh, highly valued by Presbyterians everywhere required that Debbie stop fighting the writing and submit to Brian and move to spring with a cheerful heart and a submissive spirit and respect for her husband. So Debbie is consistency stressed these days. <laughs> Local bookies report heavy odds against Debbie favorably fighting the writing. Based on their extensive experience on taking bets on wives submitting to their husbands and cheerfully maintaining their respect for them, easy money, it'll never happen. The bookies describe the wagers. While the final outcome is not certain, it appears Debbie may beat the odds. Bookies are crying foul, though, claiming that Debbie seems to be have been aided by some outside source. <laughs> Unnamed and unidentified, the accused helper remains a mystery. When asked whether the helper was involved, Debbie reported that it was, and further, that she had asked the helper to give the bookies a call. <laughs> if you see Debbie around spring, welcome her. Ask for a copy of her submission book and ask about her helper. And now, from our roving SNL reporter, Marvin Zindler. Thank you, Chevy. This trip to New Orleans has been very stressful for me. I'm just not myself tonight. Well, folks, I hope I never, ever have to go to another kitchen like this one again. <laughs> On my reports, you've seen the roaches. You've seen the rodent droppings. You've seen the overheated food storage. And yes, the big, big S. Slime in the ice. <laughs> well, folks, now I've seen it all. I've paid a visit to Miss Debbie's Bayou Senya Cajun Seafood Sandwich and Sweatshop. <laughs> My friends, the working conditions in that kitchen were deplorable. It must have been 150 degrees in there due to a faulty air conditioner. They had to climb a 12-foot ladder just to get to the thermostat. These folks were making hundreds of sandwiches with sweat rolling down their noses. The refrigerator went out while I was on site, and all the ice cream melted. But this did not stop those intrepid workers from doing their task. Then I discovered something so vile, so shocking, so inhumane that I hesitate to tell you about it. It was wholesale alligator slaughter. <laughs> In the Bayou Senya kitchen. <laughs> and they were going to serve these poor animals to those poor kids who had been working their hineys off, helping our friends and neighbors 
trying to recover from Katrina. The kids couldn't believe their eyes. There were those poor creatures with their beady little green eyes, staring up at them, begging not to be eaten. Can I see a photo of them, please, Jenny? I was shocked beyond belief. And folks, you know it takes a lot to shock yours truly. But I'm happy to report that Miss By Miss Debbie's Bayou Senior Kitchen has been shut down by the Louisiana Board of Health. And not a moment too soon, I must report. It will take a long time before I can forget about those poor gators on the chopping block, waiting to be served up on a tray. Oh, the courage of it all. Well, folks, that's my report from New Orleans. To all of you, have a good night. Good golf, good tennis, or whatever makes you happy. I'm Marvin Singler, Saturday Night News. resembles its mother quite closely. The name given to our fuzzy little friend, simply Pip. One humorous note, the bird was stepped on and crushed to death after this afternoon by Google's the baby hippo born in captivity last Wednesday. <laughs> and now, as a public service to those of our viewers who have difficulty with their hearing, I will repeat the top story of the day, aided by the headmaster of the New York School of Hard of Hearing, Jack that's her. Our top story tonight. Our top story tonight. Is green Texas resident Debbie Williams. It's green Debbie Williams. It's consistency stress. It's, it's constantly stressed. Well, that's the news tonight. I'm Chevy Chase. Good night okay. and have a pleasant tomorrow. Well, good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. <laughs> I know. How's the hair? It's okay. It's a little frizzy. Sorry. I'm her friend. I appreciate the honesty, but it still hurts. <laughs> Gwen! Protect, protect your mission, Gwen! Don't, don't touch the horse right now! Gwen, not the horse! Not the horse! Oh, okay, we got it. Good. Cha-cha-cha, <laughs> Gucci! Cha-cha-cha, Gucci! Roll call! I'm Ariana. I got Team Spirit. I don't do drugs, so check me out. <laughs> My name is Craig. I did drugs once. I am a Spartan, so check me out. U G L Y, you ain't got no alibi, you ugly. Hey, hey. K I N G, you can't take my king from me, you ugly. Hey, hey. Not, not cute. <laughs> oh my gosh, guess who's here right now? Who? Alexis. Alexis? I'm not at her. What Alexis? What? Where were you last night? What? I only had to watch Friends Alone and now I know who my real friends are. What? <laughs> really? No. Okay, me too. Call me!
one thing that is for sure, you ain't no Bobby Fisher, Bobby Fisher. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Go ask your mama and make sure you listen. Cause one thing is for sure, Bobby Fisher's missing. Bobby Fisher. Where is he? I don't know. Spartan in my TP. It's me! It's me! It's me! It's me! <laughs> Hello and good evening. This is I'm the church lady and this is church chat. <laughs> you know, I get a lot of letters here on church chat. And on my summer hiatus, I got one that I'd like to share with you in particular. <laughs> a boy named Steve writes. Dear church lady, you are a weird chick. <laughs> trip are you on anyway? Who do you think you are? God's favorite? Well, let's just do a little experiment now, won't we? If I'm not God's favorite, let me explode right now. I'm still here. Well, I guess we settle that now. Now, my guest this evening is the author of two books, Choice C, Trusting God with the Impossible, and Exiting Neverland. Miss Debbie Williams, would you please come join us? <laughs> May I call you Debbie? Is that all right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> now tell us, dear, what was your motivation for writing your book? Was was there trouble at the Williams household? Was it maybe from side effects of your, your hysterectomy? <laughs> Special no Debbie. In your book, Exiting Neverland, you used the phrase, you said invisible lizard. Now what did it mean? Could it maybe be a, a pet name for Brian's Well, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't mean to leave it just hang in there for me. But well, I'm sure you're just used to that now, aren't you? Maybe, you know, maybe Brian could answer for us. <laughs> he knows so much about it. He said the book was written for him. Oh. Well, I guess we'll just move on now, won't we? <laughs> now, Debbie, 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 Debbie. I heard that you recently got a new pet dog, and that she's a female, female dog, and you named that female dog Willie. Now, why is it that you just seem to have a fascination for terms about the male anatomy? What could it be? No. Well, let's just move on now, won't we? Debbie, I understand you have a particular talent, and you have more talents than that. We don't know. Debbie, I understand that you have, you're the only person in God's good creation that can decipher Pastor Buck Oliphant's handwriting, and I understand that, <laughs> that you likened it to, and I quote, the penmanship of a serial killer. <laughs> How could you, the author of such fine Christian books, know anything about the penmanship of a serial killer? <laughs> could, it, could it be Satan? <laughs> Well, let's just move right along then. <laughs> now, one last question, Debbie. I understand that you recently moved. Yes. 
well, could you explain to our, uh, to our audience why just living next to a prophet just wasn't good enough for you? <laughs> I don't know. Did you, you decide that maybe maybe you were just too good? You were maybe God's favorite? Well, I think we already cleared up who God's favorite was tonight, so why don't you just go along? Get out, okay. get out, get out of my office and live on your merry little way. play a song tonight. I'll be the musical guest for this evening. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the stupid pastor of this church, uh, one of the, the assistant guys, he, he wouldn't bring the piano over here. So, um, I had to learn guitar really fast. So, <laughs> so if it's okay, if Elton John plays guitar. Okay, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
be your host this evening, and uh, it's been a great week. I'm just really love working with these guys. It's been a great week. Oh, who would have thought? Me with Christian Tone. Oh, Good night, everybody. that God would let her marry Elton John. <laughs> so she, was, she, said she was happy this one time that God didn't answer her prayer. It was a prayer from Satan. <laughs> oh, thank you, <laughs> Settle down? I worked with Debbie for, I, I believe, eight years. We worked together. And Debbie, uh, and this is... Serious. Debbie is a very multi gifted person. Uh, it was wonderful to uh, have Debbie uh, fill in all the gaps that I had and be able to um, actually sometimes uh, make it look like we were doing something productive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I, I, would, I had uh, a 1.8 years with her and I saw a huge change come over her from being uh, authoritative, controlling woman to being one that, that now and she uses the S word, you know, <laughs> being submissive. And one of her, probably the best way to summarize it is one of her daughters once said, um, whenever her daughter was asking to do something, and, and Debbie's answer began to be, well, ask your father, ask your father. And Debbie wouldn't, wouldn't give her the answer that she was wanting, so she said, well, ask your father. And so that her daughter said, well, you used to be the... Uh, now let me get this, I'll get it. Uh, you used to be a tell of the mom, but now you're the queen of passing. A tell of the mom, now you're the queen of passing. So I, that best describes the change that took place in Debbie. It was wonderful to see her begin to teach, begin to counsel, uh, begin to write, do all these various things. And I, I, my prayer, my desire, Debbie, is to see God to fulfill your desire, your dream for you, Brian, also, as you continue and start a new chapter here up north. And uh, as you both continue your, your, your uh, training, your education, may God uh, give you the desires of your heart. Okay. That's over for you, any of you. <laughs> okay, I think one of my favorite um, experiences with Miss Williams was last year we went on a mission trip to uh, New Orleans and um, pretty much every night after we got back from working we were exhausted. We still had enough energy to listen to Miss Williams tell us stories, especially about the invisible venom spitting lizard that was going to attack her baby. <laughs> and it was just so much fun because not only was it pretty much one of the funniest things ever, but it also had a lot to do with um, submission, and um, it was really cool for us as younger girls to be able to hear it from her, and um, I'm really sad that she's leaving, so I'm glad I'm off in school, so I won't have to feel this much. <laughs> uh, well, let me just first give a disclaimer to all the script that you heard tonight. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
Don't come, don't come, don't come, don't send your emails to me. <laughs> Send them to dead. Yes. Oh, I, I had some. We had some fun memories together. I've been here two and a half years with Debbie, and uh, she told me that when Buck was leaving, that she was thinking she was going to go uh, with him, you know, have a fresh start, give me a, a way to start up all fresh. And I just, I told her every day, thank you for not doing that. <laughs> I wouldn't have found anything. <laughs> uh, now she has been wonderful. I, I remember one morning she came in a little bit late, and she brought in this uh, breakfast taco or burrito um, from Whataburger. Yes, it was very good, very tasty. And then the next week rolled in, and she came in a little lady, and she brought another breakfast burrito. <laughs> And I said, oh, this is kind of a regular trend. And one morning I stopped her with it and just asked her if this was her guilt offering. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to miss the guilt offering. <laughs> they kept me fed. They really did. Um, one morning, you know, I'm not from Texas. I'm from Oklahoma. And, and we don't have things quite as big down here in Texas. And, uh, one morning we came in and crawling out from the storage office in Debbie's uh, well, the storage uh, closet in Debbie's office were these bugs that the size of, I don't know what, uh, as big as my thumb crawling in front of the door. Like, what in the world is that? That's a cockroach. And we opened the door and there were, I don't know, thousands of them. Uh, you know, I thought a cockroach was only that big. It got bigger in Texas. It was quite a scary thing. We got that taken care of. Found out they eat cardboard boxes. So if you got cardboard boxes in your attic, Watch out. <laughs> um, we, did some, we did have some fun memories. I was trying to remember some of the others. And and your cockroach is great. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to forget that, didn't you? Uh, I will, on a, on a more frightening note, there was a day I saw an expression on Debbie's face that I hope I don't forget. That she doesn't ever have to have on her face again. I, I pulled up a few minutes after her. She had just opened the door and uh, had had walked in and walked out and, this, and had this look on her face of pure, I don't know if it was terror slash surprise slash, it was a look that someone had been violated. And we go in and the office had been broken into and stuff was everywhere. It was quite a frightening experience. And uh, we actually lived through that twice, uh, just in the short two and a half years that uh, she was here. So I want to thank the Deacons for getting the uh, alarm system in place and we'll be, we'll be set. Although I, you still break in without a key back here. <laughs> I know, they're already breaking in. They already know. Come on. We're working on getting that fixed for all of you guys who uh, like to redecorate my office. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for your time. It's been uh, a wonder. And both Brian, too. Brian and I had a great time. I, I've mentioned this before. We, we got to spend the summer at GA. And uh, I know we're not supposed to tell you this, but Brian, we skipped a whole day of the session and, and drove to, up to Chattanooga and uh, spent the day at a pub. <laughs> and it was very much fun. There goes more email. <laughs> I mean, I'm tempted to Brian that one. So. Uh, but, you know, all the coincidences aside, one thing we found out interesting as we were interviewing candidates and interviewing Nathan, we found out he's from Chattanooga and he used to work at that very place that we went. Email me! Email Nathan, that's right, that's right. Uh, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss you and I thank you for all your help. I have a card out. Pub, the Greek roof for pub is library. But you know, a funny thing happened many, many, many long years ago. I look back, I was sitting in this little church, and I saw this new couple. And I said, they look like an interesting little couple. Let me go back and meet them. I did, and I wanted to tell them how welcome they were. You know who it was? Who Brian did? Thank you for all your time for this. <laughs> I 
but they were the, weren't the only ones that you welcomed. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn has really been my greater to be here, so I apologize. Um, I was going to think of something really not, um, no, I probably don't need this, but I will anyways. Um, mine's sentimental, but uh, I started working here, I don't work anymore, but in 02, and um, I guess when you're around, um, Mr. Brian Land and then John was here and things like that, you needed a little bit of a womanly uh, <laughs> touch around, but anyways, um, I'm always looking for godly women to to follow, be mentored by, because there's not a lot of those, and I don't know why I'm holding this because I'm not using it. And so, um, oh, you're taping it. Okay. I'll use it. And so, um, it was just neat because Debbie and I quickly formed a friendship, and I would always sneak down there and we would talk about, I would just kind of vent to her about everything, and then she would tell me about her daughters, and we would just vent about each other's lives, kind of, and she started taking me to Sonic all the time and would buy me cheese sticks. Got me up, I'm sure, and then we get so um, And so it was just a neat time. It was, it's just a very precious time in my heart, and it was neat because she kind of saw me through three phases of um, Blaine and I were just dating, and then we got engaged, and then got married, and I guess another phase of having a baby. So it was neat to know you through all those different phases, and I'm going to miss you very, very much. And I know we'll remain friends, but I just I love you, and it was it was always precious to know that you were there, that we could talk and everything. So, and when you say something. <laughs> I think all the youth pastors at, uh, at Edge often do the, did the exact same thing that I did. Um, we used to go down to Debbie's office all the time. We didn't feel like working. And, uh, it was pretty much our escape. But her way of, I don't know if you guys know this, her way of scaring off uh, Brian, Brian Land, was every time she was just sick of him, she'd look at him and say, Brian, let me tell you about my hysterectomy. <laughs> and she's like, that's enough. I don't need to know anything. And then she somehow ran off John years later, and they found me the fool to replace her. And I, I, you know, I spent many an hour wasting time pretending to be doing work in her office, listening to her talk about, complain about her Q-tip hair. You don't know when, when her hair gets wet, it turns into a Q-tip. And she is, she's long since been my protector as well. Um, we, we had an assassins game uh, a few years ago, and. Uh, she kind of got in on it. We, we, we were walking around trying to squirt each other with squirt guns and assassinating each other. And, and she protected me in her office. She had a little super soaker that she'd whip out. It's crazy. She's, she's a real feisty thing, that, that really is. So, so Debbie, I'm, I'm going to miss wasting my mornings with you. But I'm not going to miss coming over to your house and having you, oh, what else can we feed him? I think she passed her, maybe Candy passed that along to you, but you know, I, I'm always well fed in her presence. So, thank you, Daddy. Thank you. I love you. I am wearing lip gloss. <laughs> loving my children and mm -hmm. loving my husband well and taking care of him and making sure that he never sees and, <laughs> and, and, and helping him find all those things that he never went down without me. And um, I know that y'all, a lot of you know, many roles that she's played and things that she's done. She's an amazing woman mm -hmm. and I miss you greatly. And thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. job board to Texas and I said we can't go to Texas. But, <laughs> <clears throat> I am not going to fit in there and he's like oh well okay and he kept you know bouncing back to this little church called Cornerstone and 
and I think one night I said, you need to see this. And so we were looking at the Cornerstone website, and Carter looks like a big football player in his picture on the website. <laughs> That was Hans. I... <laughs> and then we got your picture, and it was the church lady, and we both just kind of looked at each other, and I thought, you know, we need to see Texas. <laughs> so that's originally what even remotely piqued our interest. Um, then we came down here, and I was petrified because I'm a little different, and I have tattoos and a nose ring, and he made me feel. So welcome just in that session meeting, being here and sitting there. I'm gonna do it. That's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> and then you sent me your book, and I loved it. And I pass it to everyone that I can get it in the hands to in St. Louis. So it's crossing that the big S word is, is getting out there. Um, but your sense of humor and your help with us getting here and emails and calls and checking up has meant a lot to me just in the short time. And. I look forward to our girls' weekend coming to your house. I think this fall. I want to thank you for letting the pastor come that talk. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but if I remember this, a few years ago when Buck was, was really pretty down. And Debbie and probably Brian spent up, sit up, sat up most of the night writing songs and everything that they could do just to lift Buck up. And we've got that somewhere on tape. I'm not sure if you got that on tape. If you've never seen that, it's classic. But that's just typical Debbie. Uh, just, you know, your warmth and love and everything like that. And of course, this is for Debbie, but Brian, we throw you in there too. We both wish you all good. About that, that most they had for me to, to, to cheer me up is that I have I had this friend uh, that used to give me some very expensive clothes. It's really back in the 80s when he had a lot of money, he gave you lots of clothes. And I had a lot of silk shirts, very bright silk shirts. Uh, and so at this roast they had for me, Debbie somehow or another through my wife and got all the elders and deacons or you know, about, about 10 of them and gave shirts to them, they, and they all got up and sang a song to me. And so I'm listening to this song, and all of a sudden I realized, they got my, they have my shirts on There's hair going on, and I, I happen to be blessed with being able to fix some of that stuff. But uh, I'll always remember those days when I would get the call, and I'd be busy at work, and you know, trying to get a million things done, like everybody has, and people lined up my, outside my office, and the phone would ring, and it'd be Debbie. It says, Mark, yes, Debbie. You're the uh, facilities deacon, right? I said, yeah. And I think, uh, well, we've got a leak. I said, well, uh, how bad is the leak? Well, it's flooding Mason Road. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we get it fixed. <laughs> well, plumbing is not a strong suit, but we probably need to get that fixed. <laughs> it was a water leak in the sprinkler system, and she. She went to the Rolodex and she was able to, she said, shall I call somebody? It's like, yes, please. <laughs> and then we get, and then uh, another incident when uh, one of several leaks here, and she said, Mark, another phone call. Yes, Debbie. Um, we've had a bit of a problem in the children's center. How big a problem have we got? Uh, they're tearing the carpet out now and squeegeeing all the water out of all of them. <laughs> Okay, who do we need to call, Debbie? And she'd go back to the Rolodex and she said, okay, if you would like, I will call this person for you. And she did at a, at a time when I was very busy and had able to stop gap things and get things uh, started to be repaired so I could get up here and kind of assess the thing. So as a, as a rookie junior deacon, uh, <laughs> she was very much instrumental in, in helping me through some of the uh, issues that we had around the complex. And I, I really appreciated it because I, I didn't know where even to start. It's like, okay, do I go home, you know, from work and get my toolbox and come up here, or what am I supposed to do? And Debbie would always say, "No, I know who to call. We can get somebody out here right away." So I really appreciate that. And I always appreciate everything that you've done for this church. And thank you. I want to have Candy and Gary both come up here. Uh, just to, uh, Candy's going to share something, but I want for you to. Show your appreciation for them. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
I really, really, really debated. There are so many stories. <laughs> I mean, I can't even tell y'all. Uh, the first thing, I, 10 years ago, when I first came into this church, there was actually a Lutheran church here before the cornerstone got here. And I just, I really felt led to this church, even before Brian Land moved over and, and Buck, you know, was over here. And Debbie immediately took me in. Um, and having said that, Debbie, our friendship has just grown from thence forward. There are so many times when, I don't know, my life would have totally been different had it not been for death. I want to tell you all. So I just, I cannot tell you how much she means to me. But I have to tell you one story, real fast. Um, Debbie, when she first started doing the submission thing, I decided one afternoon that I was just going to give her a makeover. I decided she needed a makeover. And I told her, I said, you are not allowed to wear tennis shoes, flip-flops, and sweatpants, or t-shirts over in front of a bunch of women. They're just, you're going to scare them, okay, Deb? You know? Well, then, then she started telling me about her daughter, Lauren, who had said something really ugly about some shoes that she had, a pair of sandals. She told her. She told her mom. She said, "Mom, those look like dyke shoes." And I went, oh, "That's horrible. That's the worst thing in the whole world." Anyway, so to make a, a long story short, every time I would show up in something really bad, she'd start looking at me and telling me that, you know, I oh my gosh, you look like. <laughs> so, so the worst thing in the whole world was one afternoon, as most of you know, I ride a motorcycle. I have a motorcycle, and I show up. <laughs> Skeeters, and she looks at me and she goes, Okay, now this does everything out of the water. I had on a pair of leather chaps, and she just and thought that right. and, right. 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 and she just thought that was the most hilarious thing in the whole world. So, Debbie, we were cute. <laughs> no, we were cute. Well, the whole point is the whole point is that Debbie and I have shared some really, really funny moments, and we catch one another totally arbitrarily off guard. And I think it's been one of the best relationships I've ever had. So I just thank you so much. <laughs> Carol Dutzer, thank you for organizing this. I'd like to, if Debbie would come up and you show your appreciation for Debbie, and I would like to offer a prayer for us, for her as we close. Okay, so express your appreciation. Father God, we uh, we thank you for Brian and Debbie. Father, for the uh, 10 years that Debbie served here at this church, we thank you for bringing her to us. Thank you, Lord, for developing her into a minister where she serves and, and just honors you and everything she does. Lord, I thank you for the impact she's had on other people. And I pray, Lord, as they begin a new chapter up in spring, that you would uh, continue to to work in them, work in their lives, prepare them for uh, another ministry, Father, for whatever you have in mind for them, Lord, that you would just bless them, and that you would favor them, Lord, and that many people would uh, come to know you as their Savior, they would uh, learn about submission to Debbie, and Father, we just pray that, uh, that you just go with them, and prosper them in every way, and we have been blessed to be a part of their life. Lord, these things out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.